Here in Lesson 3.7, we're going to be working on the equations of lines in the coordinate plane. Now, as we do this, first thing we need to do is define slope, because that is the main characteristic of linear equations and items that we find. So slope, quite simply, is the ratio of the vertical change, or the rise, to the horizontal change, or the run, between any two points. In other words, when you see two points on a grid, on a coordinate plane, find out how much they move up, how much they move right or left, and divide those ratios and you'll have the slope. Now, from a writing perspective, slope is defined by the variable m, and it is equal to, as it says, this ratio of x, sorry, not x, rise divided by the run, which again is given as the change of y, so y2 minus y1, divided by the run, which is x2 minus x1. If we were to see this quickly on a coordinate grid and took two points here, place them here and here, your rise is going to be your vertical change and your run will be your horizontal change. And that would define the slope that passes through those two points, of the line that passes through those two points. So when we have slope, we'd be able to find a lot of different characteristics with it. There are four main types of slope. So if we were to take a coordinate grid here and start working with different types of lines, the first type of slope that we would have is positive, And a positive line moves up as we go from right to left. Uh, sorry, from left to right. You read a graph the same way you read a book, from left to right, as the words and paragraphs form. So as your line moves up, as you move from left to right, it's considered a positive slope. Now, if we were to be moving in a downward direction, from left to right, this would be considered a negative slope. Our third option is if we move perfectly horizontal from left to right without any change to it. This is a zero slope. And the opposite of that, if we were to move perfectly vertical from left to right, uh, so no change left to right but straight up and down, this is an undefined slope sometimes also called an infinite, infinite slope. So these different types of slopes are going to be very important as you've seen in algebra in the past and as we go through and start working with geometry and geometric figures placed in the coordinate plane. So let's start looking at different ways of writing equations for these lines. When we write equations for lines on the coordinate plane, there are two main types of equations used. There's the slope-intercept form, and then there's the point-slope form. Now, a slope-intercept form equation contains exactly what it says. It contains a slope, denoted by the variable m, and it contains a y-intercept value, denoted by the variable b. So when we write our equation, we have y equals our slope, m, being multiplied by x plus our y-intercept value of b. Now this can show up in a couple of different forms. We could have b plus mx, but no matter what, your slope is always being multiplied by the variable x, and your y-intercept is always an item being added or subtracted from the end. Our second type of equation, our point-slope form, contains two things. 
it contains a point which we will denote as an item in parentheses, of course, with the an x value, which we will call x1, and a y value, which we will call y1. A little bit hard to see there. Let me see if I can get a different color that shows up a little bit better. y1. And we still have the same slope that we were working with before for m. So when we go to write this equation, we are now going to have our equation as y, just a general variable, minus that y1. So we take the general y and we subtract the specific one that we're working with. And that is going to be equal to our slope m times x. Again, this is just a general x, not a specific value minus x1 where we do have a specific value and then close our parentheses. And the way this equation is derived when we started with our slope if we said y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 was equal to m if we were to solve this for the y's, multiply both sides by that denominator of x2 minus x1, we would end up with y2 minus y1 equals m times x2 minus x1. And then if we were to change it from having two specific points into one point and then the general, we would drop these two subscripts and you'd have your point slope form. Let's get a little bit of practice working with these forms. So we're going to write equations and graph lines for these points of the following characteristics. Our first one is a slope of 2 and passes through the point 4, negative 1. Because the information that we're given is a point and a slope, it's best to use point-slope form equation. So we're going to have y equals, uh, sorry, wrong one here. We're going to have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 as our general form. Now, filling in values, we have y will be minusing a negative 1, so that becomes plus 1, equals our slope of 2, times x minus 4, so that is the y, the x part of the point that we're working from. So now what does this look like on our graph? We start at the point 4, negative 1, and we move with a slope of 2. Slope being rise over run, 2 would be the fraction 2 divided by 1, so we're going to go up 2 and right 1 a couple of times to establish a pattern of our points and we end up with a line that looks something like this. And you can see this is a positive sloped line and our slope value is a positive 2. Next, write the equation of the line with a slope of negative 1 half and a y-intercept of 3. So, because the information we're given, we will be using slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So, filling in our values, we have y equals a negative one-half x plus three. Y-intercept of three, right here, and a slope of negative one-half. That means we drop one and move right two. Drop one and move right two, and continue that, and run it out in both directions. And we end up with these points, connecting them to make a line we end up with something that looks about like this. And you can see it has a negative slope, and our slope was a negative one half. Last line that passes through two points. So, how would we build this? 
Well, we start by finding our slope. What is our rise from negative 1 to positive 5? Our slope is equal to 6 divided by what's our run from negative 2 to positive 3, and that is 5. So our slope is 6 fifths. Now, we are able to use either point in the point slope form equation in order to write the equation of the line. Because both points sit on the same line, either point is valid to be used. So, again, we're going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And, just for the fun of it, I'm going to pick the first point. So I have y plus 1, that's minusing a negative 1, equals 6 fifths of x plus 2, because I subtracted a negative 2. So I'm going to start at that point, negative 2, negative 1, which is right about here, and move in a slope of 6 fifths. So that means I rise 6, and run 5. So out to this point here. I could also go down and back and start in the very corner and connecting these line these points with a straight line. I end up with this. And you see it's a positive slope and I had a positive six fifths. So we've worked a lot here with positive and negative slopes and being able to write those equations. There is there are two other types of slope that are in this lesson. And those are the slopes of the special lines, our vertical or horizontal systems. So when we graph a perfectly vertical line or a perfectly horizontal line, only one item is changing. Or more specifically, one item is staying the same. So for this blue line that is on the grid, if we start picking out coordinate points, this is the point negative 2, 0. This would be the point negative 2, negative 4. And if I keep selecting points, negative 2, 6, what you'll see is that one item always stays the same, and that is the x value. So, what we have is x equals negative 2. There's x only and no y. It is a perfectly vertical line. Using the same routine and procedure for our, the red line, we have 0, 4 as a point, negative 7, 4, <coughs> 5, 4, the thing that stays the same is y is always 4, so that is our equation, y equals 4. So if we have y and no x, that's a zero slope and a horizontal line. With that in mind, how do we graph the line x equals 4? Well, we need to find places where the x part of the coordinate is 4. So we have here and a few others on that same location. So we get this vertical line. How would we graph y equals negative 2? We need to find locations where y is negative 2, such as the y-intercept. But any coordinate with negative 2 for its y portion will be there. And if we connect those points, we have this line. So perfectly vertical equations are x equals. Perfectly horizontal are y equals. So a lot of information in this lesson. Make sure you review it and are ready to use it as we move forward because we're going to apply this to parallel and perpendicular lines.